Hi guys, you're back here with Barry, and um, about two, three days ago, uh, we ran into a really nice young fella, and I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Rafael. Hey, how are you people? I'm Rafael. I'm Jose Rafael, but yeah, I'm Rafa. We, uh, what happened was, we were just, I was in Rio San Juan with a couple of my buddies, and of course everybody knows Alduino from the YouTube channel. And all of a sudden, this young guy walks in, we're having a cigar together, uh, and he goes, wow, who owns that truck out there? Now, I, I, I get that a lot, so I wasn't really all that shocked about it. A lot of people like the old truck. And I was asking him, uh, he was asking me, who owns that truck? Who owns it? So I said, I do, why? And he said, a unique answer, which for me is a first. <laughs> and uh, the unique answer was, I have the exact same truck. And that's a first. <laughs> so that's what led us into getting to know each other. And uh, we asked him to sit down and we, he started showing me. And I'm going to put some of these pictures of his truck up on the YouTube so you're not just staring at staring. Two, uh, two talking heads oh, yeah. here. And <laughs> we started to talk a little bit and uh, we found out that Raphael's from Venezuela. So I want to introduce Raphael and uh, thanks a lot. I do appreciate you coming on camera and I, I want you to tell your story about um, what you kind of spoke with us a little bit and what we spoke of uh, today while we were having lunch about what's okay. happened to you since the crisis in Venezuela and, and, and how you uh, how it's affected um, short term how your life is and the the hardships that it's brought and uh, what can you tell the folks that, that, that you've learned that you're learning now through this type of ordeal okay guys well first of all Okay, I would like uh, to tell you guys to, um, life isn't easy, okay? I grew up in a really good family. I started my elementary school in the States. I came back to Venezuela with my mother. I never met my dad. I don't know who is him. And okay, the thing is, I had a really good education and everything. Suddenly when, Hugo Chavez in 1998 came to be became the president of my country. Everything was good. Maybe uh, all Venezuelans will let you know that it's Hugo Chavez's fault. This uh, what's happening in Venezuela right now because of socialism and stuff. But honestly, I don't think it works like this. After Maduro became the president, okay, it's a mess. What happened? Um, I finished my elementary school, I went to, I was in the States, I came back to Venezuela, finished my high school and went to Paris to study French. I overstayed my welcome in Europe for seven years. Now, what happened? When I came back to Venezuela because my mother had a cancer, I see how the situation is going on politically and economically in Venezuela and it's a misery even though you know i'm in uh how do you say uh, short uh, medium term of a uh, uh, wealthy class families in venezuela but there is nothing right now like all the money that my grand my grandfather left was uh, uh, spent it on my mother's cancer therapy okay the thing is why? When I came back from Europe, back to Venezuela, it's supposed to be like, yeah, the best thing. I'm back in my country. I have my stuff, my house. I'm not paying rent. I'm not paying. Okay. I started uh, living a wild lifestyle because, yeah, of course, I had money, but not that much. I was with my mother with this uh, healthy situation of cancer. It's horrible. When she died, Okay, I said I've been, I'm 28 years old right now. I've been living in first world countries at least 11, 12 years old of my life, 12 years of my life. So I realized that this 
thing that was happening in Venezuela. It's not what I want for my life, even though it's my country, it's my family, it's my house. I have everything there, but no, my life, it's a completely misery. So with this uh, political situation, I wanted to sell my things from my inheritance and nothing, no one is going to invest money on cars or apartments or like real estate uh, the real estate communities and to invest in something in a country where you can't find medicines or rice so you know I'm willing just to go back to Europe or go back to states to find a good job I I started I, I know three languages but yeah I can work I'm really smart I'm really curious and I don't find a job in Venezuela that pays me a little bit uh, of what what I can do so I start thinking about this new uh, currency Bitcoin to invest in this Bitcoin thing and obviously I could do trading without investing on the machines that generates that mines the Bitcoin the thing is I got stolen by cops and kidnapped because no one knows in this third world society so much about Bitcoin but who knows it okay politicals or uh, smart people they knew that I was making money with this mining Bitcoin in a country where the price of electricity it's nothing yeah you can mine Bitcoin and you just sell the currency to whatever embassy it's gonna buy it and they're gonna pay a fair price because it's like dollars or euros that's the strongest currencies in the world good now okay Barry uh, after this happened uh, the, the kidnapping because they pulled me over and they just see a white fancy boy flashing uh, Mercedes and yeah this Bitcoin uh, dealing word okay they said they thought that I was just a millionaire boy and they ripped me off everything I had saving saved for going out back when I could go to Europe because I got banned let me, so, let me ask though while you're on that subject <clears throat> while your mother was alive okay you would have been considered a upper middle class wealth in Venezuela? Yes. I mean, um, your family had an apartment where? Yeah, okay, not my family. My mother, your has, mother? had an apartment in Margarita Island. She okay. bought it in 2008. Okay. And you had a house. Le the house in, in Caracas. In, in the Caracas. Ca yeah, the you Caracas. had vehicles? Yeah, the vehicles. I just wanted to go. Like, okay, I'm selling my apartment, I'm selling my truck, I'm selling the house. I just want to leave. And since 2015, this is crazy, but I ju just can't find someone who pays a fair and a logical price for it. So, wow. Uh, would you would you felt things would have been a bit different had you diversified into different countries, your mother? And you, yeah, of course, yes. Uh, where everything wasn't in one country, do you? Because I'm forever trying to tell people the importance of learning to do that, not to spend your money, but to position it where it's not all in the same currency and it's not all in one country. Okay. Now that. Since, you know, Chavez is gone and the new power came in, okay. the country had folded. The currency had depreciated to yes. almost nothing. Yes. Do you now see where that might have helped if, because you're now a victim of what happened, you can't okay. sell what you own. Yes. Do you not see now through, unfortunately, going through a bit of a challenge, that the importance of doing this so the next time it comes around you you don't put all your eggs into one basket now yes that's a really smart tip I think it should be it could be better if in that time like maybe five years seven years ago my mother would invest some of her money somewhere else out of Venezuela 
because okay obviously she was thinking about me I'm her only son mm -hmm. and okay I'm Venezuelan well we want properties in our country that's how life works but now I can see how the world the world works like and it's not it's not worth it to invest something in a country that you know that it's not gonna be okay okay well maybe you don't know or you know it but still uh, it's a speechless to think about investing in a country with this uh, collapse economically uh, just because you were born there I I I see when, when, when you look back at it though when times were good in Venezuela and I know they were certain times I, I've been there um, do you tend to the family doesn't talk about these kind of things when times are good no people not only family the people will never talk about this when you're good no it doesn't matter everything is just good yeah when you're good the world is good right <laughs> yeah but having to go through this now what could you tell other people because you're living this and uh, hopefully somebody's going to see this and uh, there is work out there it's just difficult to find it at times especially without you know the the paperwork for the for various countries but yes. good people do get opportunities uh, one of the reasons we're doing this is hopefully people will see this video and recognize a sincere young person that's just looking for work and is is um, my god you speak three languages you do have some trades you've worked in various industries you're educated both in america both foreign